Well, this has been one hell of a fucking chaotic goddamn start for us, hasn't it? Oh, hell yes. Yeah. This it's has been, been a lot wonderful. of fun. I've been trying to learn a new tool. It was fine when I was doing it on my channel earlier. Streamlab OBS, yay. I don't know why it's so hard for you. You're already a tool, Brockus. Right? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, why is it just being so goddamn difficult? Uh, who All knows? right. I, there may be double me for a little bit. Just troubles joining. Because. Okay. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, we're already, we're already catching black in the chat. Catch a flag for what? I don't have the chat up. Uh, what do you think? For fucking ruining fucking a quarter of the show already. For Brockus, you ruined a quarter of the show already. I blame you and not OB OBS. You can always blame Brockus. Or we can blame Darnell. No, I don't blame you, Brockus. You know, I don't mean to give you so much, so much flack. I, you were having a good day, and now you're not having so much of a good day. I was uh, learning things. I, I accidentally was put the thing. voodoo on you this morning, bro, and I forgot to take it off. Uh, so I feel I'm partially responsible. You dick. Why would you do that? <laughs> voodoo on you, man. It, while you were eating your fucking uh, cornflakes. All right. We were talking about uh, hmm, a certain banning. <coughs> yes. Thing. Yes. Um, so when my computer decides to stop acting like some fucking retarded ass slow kid in school or some shit. God damn it. So like Opal's kid? Oh. That's just uh, me. Just kidding. I think Opal's kid is cute as hell. I just like giving Opal shit. Opal's Everybody kid likes cool. giving Opal shit, but yeah, no, I'm gonna back away from the kid. Opal's yeah. kid is cute as hell. Opal's kid is it's cute. It's like her kick it's like her cooking. If she doesn't want to get shit about it, don't tweet every like you know, uh, that's weird just, thing that's just that's just a <laughs> stick. That is that is also a parenting thing. There's yeah. loads of parents who tweet weird things their kids have done, not because they're doing it. You know, like, look at me. They're kind of doing it like, oh my god, look what my kid did. <laughs> what What's actually said about the Opal thing is that uh, shit you not. Earlier today on Twitter, Opal had to actually she made a joke because she ran out of ranch. And said, white people tell me how to make ranch. She then had a separate paragraph clarifying that was a fucking joke. My response was, I'm actually kind of sad that we now live in a time where we have to clarify that we're fucking joking. Because it, keep, it keeps it happening. To, it's sad, too, because, like, no, no shit. I, I actually have been dealing with this for a while now. I will make jokes in the chat. Like, I'll just not say it for Wednesdays. I'm like, I'm feeling really loopy and goofy and weird because i haven't been getting much sleep i'm just gonna make a bunch of sad jokes because i think they're fucking funny and then i got like two people on not safe for wednesdays fucking acting like i really am being super depressing and shit and a few people in the chat that taking me seriously and i have to repeatedly say i'm not being serious don't take this seriously it's a joke i'm joking it's because some people don't know how to internet it's not even just that. It's it's like I don't know. These everybody seems to think that I'm constantly depressed, and I'm like, I'm fine. I am okay. Please stop acting like at any given moment the delicate little flower is going to crack and fall apart. All right, that's not a, what's happening. We have a question from Mister LM002. So, what did Schmackle get banned from? Yeah, we unfortunately left off uh, on that topic because apparently my computer has decided, wait a second, you're using Streamlabs OBS and Google Chrome? Not on my watch, motherfucker! <laughs> I shall not have it! <laughs> I'll have none of this today! <laughs> <laughs> a box on you and your family! <laughs> Voodoo on you, good sir! <laughs> Voodoo on all of you! Voodoo on, on any who use Google with OBS! Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, basically what ended up happening is, is that uh, most of you are quite familiar with uh, a certain somebody uh, named uh, Sarah Hatcher, Sarah Hatcher B. Sanders, whatever the fuck she goes by. Uh, essentially, this woman has been a bit of a uh, gold mine for us on the country stream because we have greatly enjoyed her coming on and lying to the entire fucking audience, including the people that she's apparently trying to be truthful with consistently saying i own my business i own my stuff she doesn't own any of it she literally fucking consistently tells people 
it's never her fault. It's always somebody else's fault. She will not own up to her own fucking mistakes, her own actions. Well, sometime after her couple of appearances on the cunt stream, uh, she got caught doxing in the Gulf City fucking uh, Discord. And that resulted in her eventually getting banned. She has been since trying to vindicate herself and actually show that she has not been, in fact, doxing. And how does she do this? By doxing people. So, last night on the uh, Saturday Night Cunt stream, we decided to have a nice little chat with her. Of course, this was a couple of days after the explosion that was the Sarah incident on uh, fucking uh, Thursday night. Black, when, uh, the Blackman Button Show. Yes, yes. The new show that uh, that Schmeckle was trying to push forward where it's uh, it's rotating hosts and, and basically we were going to be um, uh, talking about some of our favorite channels, channels we really enjoy, why we enjoy them, their personalities, what they do, stuff like that. And for the first hour, I actually did get to talk about Poisoning the Well, and that was the channel I was going to be talking about. And then eventually Sarah started uh, talking shit on Opal in the chat. We bring her on. She causes a huge fucking scene and is sensually outed as a doxer, cries like crazy because Ghastly keeps pointing out how full of shit she is. AP tries to calm her down but does the whole, okay, daddy's going to have to sit you down now kind of thing. And she does not take any of it well. Eventually, she does legitimately just leave the hangout after she had been trying to fight us for two and a half fucking hours. Yeah. So last night, she refused to come on. And when we were talking about the whole situation, the main fucking thing was she had earlier that day been streaming on her own channel, and she had done it three different times. The reason why is because a collection of people kept... Uh, she kept doxing her own fucking Hangouts link. I'm not even shitting you on that one. She should. She kept screen sharing her own Hangouts link. Oh, and, she didn't uh, stop screen share long enough to send out the link? No, no, no. She didn't actually like. Basically, she kept screen sharing her her uh her computer screen, obviously, and it and then kept clicking showing on to the clicking the onto hands. the link, showing it to everybody. Yes, and so basically, other people got it. They went onto the stream to basically stop her from what she was doing, which was literally doxing people, because she was trying to prove she's not a doxer by doxing people. It made no fucking sense. Yeah, so she was dropping her private DMs. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so it was. It was I awkward. swear to God, I'm not a doxer. People, let me show you all this private shit from other people to prove it. Exactly. That's pretty much what it was. We even brought somebody that she consistently kept accusing of uh, accusing her, wrongfully accusing her of being a doxer, which was somebody named Kaz Fox Demon or something like that. I can't remember. Anyways, um, this guy eventually comes onto the cunt stream to basically explain his point on the whole subject. And, and Trippy is also there to explain his point on the whole subject because Trippy and Cass have collectively been dealing with this woman who doesn't ever stop with her fucking stupidity, with her fucking drama. She's just this goddamn vortex of retard and she can't fucking seem to stop it. It's annoying. And uh, so she didn't even bother trying to come onto the hangout that time. Last night, she just chose to stay in the chat. She chose to stay off the the the, um, the stream itself, and uh, that that was it. Well, shortly after that particular stream, Schmeckle eventually, uh, you know, d doesn't really think anything of it. Something weird happens on his Twitter, and all of a sudden, he realizes his Schmeckle account, the cunt stream account, and Mrs. Uh, Schmeckle's uh, fucking account have all been hit on Twitter. With a what band. Is, what Mrs. Mrs. Schmeckle too? I had not what heard the this. What does hers have to do with it? I mean, she wasn't. Mrs. Schmeckle barely tweets. Yeah, it's true, very true. But she has a, uh, a Twitter account that is connected to uh, to Schmeckle's uh, Schmeckle TV and uh, Cunt Stream. Yes, she's so, Mrs. Yeah. Schmeckle. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes, exactly. But all three Twitter accounts were hit after stream last night. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems kind of suspicious. That's one hell of a coincidence. Schmeckel himself has had, you know, quite a bit of bad blood in the past, uh, with several months, with a bunch of different YouTubers 
you know, there was the whole Jeff Holiday thing, Wizard of Cause thing, Monday Matt, uh, Tonka, Failure, Andy. There's a bunch of different YouTubers that uh, Schmeckle actually ended up pissing off just a little too much. But here's the funny thing about that. Jeff and Wiz never once came after Schmeckle in that fashion. Um, there is rumor that uh, Jeff and Wiz were actually uh, um, uh, not not doxing people. What was it? Content claiming people and shit like that. Uh, yeah. There's there, there's no definitive proof on that one. So it could have easily also been one of their fans been pushing that shit like that. I don't know any of that stuff. But anyways, that's well, just... also also like what would, was there anything else that Schmeckel was tweeting? Do you know of that possibly could have gotten him the ban? No. If you ever actually pay attention to what Schmeckel actually tweets, he almost never is on Twitter enough to really piss anyone off. Well, yeah, maybe... he just tweets out the streams pretty except much. When all a, yeah. Except when there's links to things, and that was one time. Yeah, well, you know, we don't talk about I don't that. I see and him still. tweeting out, like, like to talking shit to other people. I see him tweeting out the streams and sometimes responding to things that people say, but that's it. Eh, anyways... Basically, despite all the troubles that Schmeckel has actually had with people in the past, not once has this happened. But all of a sudden, here's this person who keeps coming onto the cunt stream or keep being a talking point on the cunt stream, and suddenly there's a problem. Suddenly, not one, but all three Twitter accounts that Schmeckel and Mrs. Schmeckel might use to actually contact people with or even just tweet out with, suddenly all three of them in one night are hit. Specifically, the hardest one was the Cutstream uh, uh, Twitter account because that one was connected to a phone number he's not even using anymore. So that's gone. Oof. Yeah. What? Sounds wonderful. Schmeckel doesn't give up, of course, and he came back with the Snatchcast uh, fucking um, Twitter account. Because Either way... You never keep Schmeckle down. Yeah, either way, it, it sounds very, very suspicious that right after some pretty hardcore drama involving a, a certain overly dramatic person, suddenly Schmeckle goes to Twitter jail. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds very, very fishy to me. Yeah, it seems rather uh, circumstantial, but... Mm -hmm. Circumstantial, but solid, solid circumstantial. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the circumstantial doesn't always mean a flimsy. It just means there's no hard, hard evidence. evidence yeah. it, it just means there's a, yeah, there's a likelihood, and it's a strong likelihood, but no one has the actual proof proof of what happened. That's true. Um, one thing that we can at least well, let's continue. Give it to another say, day. She'll probably dox herself. Fucking, she'll probably like screen share her own dumb shit. That possibility. There's a good possibility of that. I think. Uh, I think one of the most interesting ones. Uh, a bit of the most interesting part of all of this is that um, I, uh, after found out about this early, uh, this morning, I mm. eventually tweeted or retweeted one of uh, Schmeckel's fucking tweets when he actually made a comment about this very subject. And I tagged Sarah in that retweet. And I asked her, do you, do you know anything about this? Followed up with a, uh, a, a tweet thread that actually was uh, me clarifying. I'm not actually accusing you of anything, but it does seem suspicious that uh, this happens almost immediately after, you know, the drama with you. So, she hasn't responded. I didn't think she would. Yeah. Oh, it's just... It, this is the kind of shit that makes everybody look at your personality and immediately think, liar. 100% liar. And first of all, her fucking uh, Twitter account is actually privated. Why would you need your stuff to be privated? Oh, because only the people that follow me should know what I say. Fair enough. Okay. A lot of people might be willing to do stuff like that. That's, a, that's all right. You, you could do as you please. So, cool. But uh, then why do you keep going onto streams and lying to people's faces and when you're called out for it, you keep doubling down? It's not even just doubling down. It's double down, triple down, quadruple down. 
she just she doesn't stop. She won't fucking ever stop. And then to only later say I'm not <laughs> I'm not a doxer and I'll prove it by doxing people. Okay. That's fine. That's nice. What are you going to do next? Wrongfully fucking attack somebody's Twitter account because oh, yep, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, she seems to keep digging a deeper deeper and deeper fucking hole. Oh, yeah. It's been a fucking fun train wreck so far. I'm I'm excited to see what if it if it evolves, if it's done. If it evolves, I know it'll be because uh I mean, we had to we had to bring her up because we're talking about the sh the stream that she did, doxing everybody. But I mean, you know, she we're just bringing up the the next stage that she did. You know what I mean? Like we're waiting to see what what let's see what she does next, and see oh, if it, sure. uh, you know it's a good kicking the ball, kicking her own balls like everything else. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I already know what the next step is. See, she's already she's already ch uh, checked off uh, several different boxes when it comes to like you know, fucked up things people do on the internet that makes them more fucked up than most people. Um, for example, she's doxing people. Maybe the first time was an accident. Like you know, I'm I'm willing to at least possibly give her that credit. But like, there's way too much her side of the story that makes no sense to the point where you're thinking. I'm not so sure it was an accident, but I'm still willing to give you the benefit of the doubt that it might have been. But only to follow up by basically saying, okay, I'm not a doxer, and this is how I'm going to prove it, by doxing people. She even doxed a dick on her own fucking stream. I mean, that got pulled, right? Or did the... No. Did that go through? Ah, oh, she doxed a dick. She doxed in her DMs a dick pic. There is a, uh, you can tell, you can read in that stream who sent it to her and the majority of the shaft in and of itself. There is an actual picture of a dick. Now, here's the stupid part. Um, she left it that way. She left the stream up, knowing fully well that was there. Completely knowing fully fucking well that was there. And several hours later, it wasn't until halfway through the cunt stream when a non schmeckle Zell and everybody else on the cunt stream that night were yelling at her, pointing out how fucking stupid she is. She shouldn't have left it up, but apparently she doesn't want to, like, you know, if you take down streams, it just diminishes your integrity. Uh, no, it doesn't, you stupid cunt. You have a guy's dick on there. Uh, rule number one with YouTube. Uh, even on nights where people have paid for pasties on my channel, I adult the stream, and there is one stream from long ago where I'm out and out topless, and that's privated on my channel for a reason. It's not gone, it's just, unless you had the link, you can't find it. Yep. If you have stuff like that up, you have to private, or you have to adult, or both immediately yeah well she decided that could get your channel gone she will she decided to just leave it as is and didn't think anything of it when we told her that she should have deleted it already she tried to argue with us and say that uh well you know then it would diminish her integrity she didn't want people people could just take it anyways and put it on uh, uh, on their channel they could just mirror it so like you know it's it's not like it's a big deal and i'm and i'm just pissed off because they we they then pointed out it's been on for several hours if you have it up there for maybe five minutes and two channels have basically mirrored that very same stream fair enough you have a point there obviously but the longer you keep it up the more channels can actually fucking mirror it the more exposure that that dick pic will actually get and so on so she finally decided to delete it but i'm pretty sure she didn't actually delete it i, I think she just privated it she wanted to keep it up. She wanted to, she wanted that evidence, I guess you could say. And it was just it, it was this mind fuck of stupidity. But here's here's where I think that she's gonna try to take it next. So far, we have had wrongful strikes on Twitter. We have had doxing to save face from doxing. Uh, we have had consistent lying to people's faces on streams. We have had not letting the drama go and continuing to bring it to other people's fucking channels. Um, 
and we've had a secret lawsuit threat. Mm. What? I hadn't heard that one either. Yeah, this is one that I'm I, I'm not sure Trippy Pit wants me talking about, but uh, sorry, Trippy, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, uh, tell <laughs> you about this. Uh, yeah, no, privately, she decided that she wanted to uh, sue Trippy Poop for apparently doxing her tits. Let me take you back a bit. So in the beginning of Trippy's experience with Sarah, he never really liked Sarah from the beginning. He didn't really like her necessarily. Something about her personality, something about her as a person, uh, maybe it was her face, who knows. She and him were being nice to each other in the beginning, and then eventually she decides to unsolicited send him fucking titty pics. Pictures of her tits. And he couldn't stop laughing. He actually censored the picture for his own benefit because he thought it was funny, but never actually sent it to anyone. Not once. And uh, he could have sent it to a lot of people, but he never sent it to anyone. Well... She found out later on that a bunch of other people that she had never sent it to actually had the picture and automatically accused Trippy Poop of being the one to actually dox her tits and claims that he actually did dox her tits. Now, he had said on a stream that he did censor it with a bunch of different little stickers and stuff like that. But what she didn't hear in that particular comment was, I did it just for me. I didn't actually show it to anyone. I just I censored it because I thought it was funny and that made the picture better. And I was like, okay, fair enough. Trippy likes to fuck around with stupid shit like that. But she decided to take it a step further and say that, yeah, he actually doxxed her tits. Now, mind you, she's actually sent that fucking very same picture to a bunch of different people. But, yeah, it was Trippy Poop that actually fucking doxxed her tits. Even though she's the one who actually doxxed her own tits to a bunch of people. And secretly, she decided to actually threaten Trippy with a lawsuit about the the titty thing the two of them had been going at it for quite a while which eventually spilled into several chats including gulf cities and the dumps and but, mine oh uh, and yours and uh that was all within the last week and a half and that's pretty much the reason why because trippy is pretty fucking pissed off that she would even take it that far now sarah does say that they did actually talk offline privately and they had resolved their issues but uh i think it was thursday night stream uh even though Trippy wasn't bringing that topic up, everybody started getting this weird vibe, like maybe she wasn't actually letting all of that go, that maybe secretly she was still going to try to push forward with the lawsuit. So I wouldn't be surprised if the dumb cunt actually did decide to fucking push forward with some sort of stupid-ass lawsuit. Most likely, she's going to end up turning to somebody she's not a fan of, possibly me, because I'm the, I, I guess you would say I'm the next target. Um, but, uh, she might actually try to threaten me with litigation or some shit like that. And, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, Sarah, if you're watching, if you're listening and I can go ahead and check right now to see if you actually are. Uh, no, she's not. Um, <laughs> but she could be listening later. Dara, I'm not afraid of you. And I don't care what you think you can try to do to me. You've got nothing. Fuck off. So, I believe that's enough of that story. Let's go ahead and move on to another story. Uh, let's let's keep the funny rolling. Rob, give us another uh, uh, Florida man. That that sounds like it uh, it might be a good one. Okay, uh, let me pull it up here real quick. You're putting me on the spot, bro, because I wasn't prepared. I'm sorry. Let me pull up the page. Um. Okay. Uh, I know we're we're gonna be we lost some time there, so I'm gonna have to cut cut it down to a few other stories. So we will let, uh, I'll let you guys decide. We have a uh, couple headlines to decide from Tampa fire captain demoted for stripping off shirt and challenging homeless man to a fight. Brave mother uses taco to distract fake cop. Uh, well, until the real cops get there and monkey attacked employee and then climbed on top of shelves at a home Depot. Taco. Taco, taco it is. Ren has decreed. All right. A California woman was praised for her mama bear instincts after she distracted a gun toting fake top cop who was terrorizing her husband and four children on Sunday by simply offering him a taco, police said. The family was enjoying carne asada tacos and soda from a food truck in the city of industry in Los Angeles County. 
around 6.30 p.m. when a dangerous stranger approached the family and began terrorizing them. Police said in a news release Monday, the family had stopped to get food after a day at the water park. The man identified as Juan Rodriguez allegedly claimed to be an undercover cop and flashed his gun concealed on his waistband and flashed a badge in an attempt to prove his identity. The mother, however, saw through his disguise, police said. The mother instantly began to put together a, uh, a plan to distance her husband, three daughters, and toddler, who was still buckled in his car seat inches away from the man with a gun. The mother, going for the taco tactic, offered the 38-year-old suspect a taco and told him she needed to grab napkins from the food truck. The man with the gun continued to flash his gun and ransacked through the mother's purse as she walked away. The mother approached customers at the taco truck, told them not to look back, and told them a man with a gun was threatening her family. The taco truck employees and customers immediately called 911. Police found Rodriguez standing next to the family's van when they arrived at the scene. Rodriguez allegedly tried to escape by tossing his gun in the van and trying to get in. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm with these guys. Don't worry about it. Everything's cool. I'm with, I'm with this family here. He could be. They don't know. <laughs> uh, deputies were able to detain the suspect before anything further occurred. Deputies recovered the gun and made sure all family members were unharmed. Rodriguez was charged with child endangerment, impersonation, impersonating an officer and outstanding warrants. And that is the end of my article. Ah. Uh, I mean, that was, uh, I mean, it, I don't know if it was really a, ta a taco that saved the day. I think she was just playing along with like, okay, you're a cop, but like you did you have a taco and I got to get some stuff here from there to playing along with the cop thing, even though she was uneasy about it. Oh, smart woman, though. I mean, she yeah. didn't freak out. She didn't cause a scene. And she got her family safe. <laughs> the most fucked up thing about this, though, is uh, on the headline when it says Brave Mother Uses Taco to Distract Fake, fake Cop Terrorizing Family, they put brave in quotes. And I'm like, what the fuck do you got to do to get a fucking, to get, a, you know, a little fucking brave without quotes going down? No, just, you know. Uh, I don't it, know. I was starting a a gun-toting psycho pretending to be a cop fucking with your family. Yeah. yeah. That qualifies. I, I'd give her the I'd give her the brave without the quotes. I'd give her uh I'd give her brave without quotes cuz she did have her kids there and she got the guy with the gun away from the, her kids. That's pretty brave. Perhaps it's because the quotes are there because they weren't sure which word to go with. It's like, do we go with brave or do we go with clever? Not sure. But that's one lucky ass lady. Shit, now we have a third one. I don't just put, you should just go with clever. Clever mom uses taco to distract. I mean that that is a very clever spot. Like, do you want a taco? Let me get you some napkins. They may have also flipped a coin and, and said, like, no matter what one it lands on, we're putting quotation marks because we like both words. Maybe. Uh, oh, man. I don't know, but it, I I just, I really like that part where it's like he tries to escape by, like, tossing his gun in the van and hopping in. <laughs> this is my family. That's just <laughs> This is my family. Part. No, we're not. It's like, come on, guys, back me up here. It's like, what the fuck? Oh, <laughs> I thought dude. we were cool. The you guys thing, yeah, hook me up with a taco and everything. The only thing that would make it even funnier, to be honest, would, would probably be um, if uh, <laughs> if if the van he had gotten into, like, in order to escape and all that shit, to try to blend in or whatever. This is my family, and it was just a bunch of gay midgets. <laughs> oh, that was like carnies. Like he didn't even <laughs> think. Of, carnies. He just saw people in the van, jumped in, didn't think about it. And it was just like, oh, this is my family here. It's, oh no! And the man was <laughs> never seen or heard from again. Yes. Oh, uh, do you th do you think they would have just dressed him up and turned him into their own, you know, life size doll? Yes, yes, they would have. And we have a five dollars super chat from Billy Senpai Gaming. Thanks, Billy. Uh, he was hoping that the cops would think they all look alike. <laughs> yes, yes, he was. 
Uh, Marcus, do you want to hear about a woman who got her head stuck in an exhaust pipe of a car? I don't oh, want to, but let's hear no, it anyways. I, I am dying to hear about this. Well, we just heard about a lady fucking using a taco in a fucking very smart way. Might as well go the opposite direction. <laughs> A Minnesota woman had a memorable time at a music festival this past weekend, but no one would blame her if she rather forgets. Uh, Caitlin Storm was at Winstock Music Country Music Festival uh, in you know, Winstead, Winstead, Minnesota, when, quote, we were just all having fun and I saw this big exhaust pipe. And I was like, hey, my head could probably fit in that. So I tried it. It did fit, but I couldn't. But it didn't uh, want to come back out. <laughs> wow! Wow! Uh, hey, my head could probably fit in that. Don't try it, you dumb, dumb ass bitch. What the fuck is wrong with you? You know they say that you know on the intelligence spectrum that that the um, men are smarter on the and dumber on the extremes. But, you know, I, I have to question that now. We have evidence otherwise. Yeah, no, I, I do have to bring that into question because, like, despite what your studies may say, yes, typically you will see in the South Jim Bob thinking that he can ride his four-wheeler off a ramp and it would be boss as fuck, hold my beer, and next thing you know, he's ass in the air fucking, you know, flying into the, the barn. Whatever. Fine. But that's like, you know, I think it's going to look cool. This <laughs> lady thought... Can I if, stick my head in that? If you went up to Jim Bob and you said, hey, Jim Bob, you think your head could fit in that exhaust pipe? He'd look at you like a fucking retard and be like, I don't know, fucking idiot. Why don't you go ahead and try it? It looks like your head could, like, the, the, there's no way the guy would stick his head in the exhaust pipe. Yeah, the guy wouldn't stick that, his head. That's in not head. a guy dumb thing to do. A well, guy no, would, a guy way. would, go ahead. There's only one way, on a dare. On yes. a dare, but now, even then... They make sure that they took away all their friends' camera phones because this girl was stuck in the tailpipe for 45 minutes before <laughs> they were able to get her out. And the most shocking thing of all, she was cited for underage drinking and taken away, taken out of the music festival. Congratulations, you just Wait, made so the how did they get her out? Did they, did they have to cut the, the tailpipe off? They had to cut the tailpipe. <laughs> and I'm um, guessing that's an ill, like, custom tailpipe, if she can yep. fit her head into it. The custom tailpipe. Uh, the video was posted on Facebook and viewed 2.3 million times. Because, <laughs> of course. Oh, they, why not? If of all the things to get famous for, there there are a few things that you just want to cross off the list. Oh, but this is her quote, though. But a lot of people don't realize how serious it was. It's it's kind of expected when it's blasted on the internet that you're going to get negative comments. Some people can be really cruel. She had it coming. Yeah, she did. She. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is fucking full comment. She had it fucking coming. Bitch this is one of those situations. And a goddamn exhaust pipe. You, you know how they should have gotten it out? Is they should have just uh, smoked her out. Just fucking just rev that engine and just use all the exhaust fumes to just pop her head right out of the fucking. That, that probably would have killed her. But no, I'm sorry. This is another one of those situations where you have to look at her and go, "Well, you were asking for it." Yeah. And the only part that annoys me is the fact of the guy whose car of which the tailpipe of her head was stuck didn't ask her to pay for it. Even though his tailpipe basically had to be cut and he has to pay to have it fixed. Yeah, that, I would fucking totally make that dumb bitch pay for it. Oh, I would be sitting there the whole time she's getting her head stuck out of here, going like, "If we have to cut this bitch off, you're fucking paying for my tailpipe." Just whispering, whispering by her head, by by the entrance of the tailpipe, just be like, "You're paying for this, you dumb bitch." Yeah, that little nineteen-year-old girl would be getting a, a a bill going. Here is the bill to get my tailpipe fixed. When are you gonna pay it? Because I'm not paying for your drunken mistake. 
and she got fucking hit with the underage drinking, she's which 19. she's got the, the court the appearance 19. for. The chick is 19. She was 19 years old drinking with friends at a music festival and thought, hey, my head would fit in there. And turns out it did. Oh, jeez, man. Oh, well. Well, you know, I, I uh, hate to make this public service announcement, but don't go sticking shit in tailpipes. Just as a fucking blanket, blanket pro tip life hack. Don't go sticking any any body parts in tailpipes. And I can't believe I have to fucking, that, you know, that, that has to be said. Yeah, it's sad when you have to tell people, hey, that tailpipe may be bigger, but don't stick your head in it. And, and All right. I yeah. <laughs> well, sorry. Yeah. It's just uh, you. Know, how about we move on to uh, to another story? I believe I'm next. See, Ishtar never showed, so I think I might be able to get uh, get all my stories in because I got another one that I haven't brought up yet, which is my last story, and that is the best headline. You are you are, and that is the one that is going to break Brockus today. I know it. Ooh. So uh, next up, we have Tampa Fire Captain demoted. For stripping off shirt, daring homeless man to fight. A homeless dude was probably asking for it. All right. Tampa Fire Rescue Captain uh, Jeremy Finney was, by all accounts, a model firefighter until he lost his cool. The outburst cost him two ranks. Damn, dude, he got fucking knocked down a peg or two, didn't he? Uh, Finney has served nearly 16 years in the department and was a member of the TAP. Tactical medical response team, which accompanies SWAT teams on dangerous missions. He helped kids learn about firefighting through the department's Explorer program. He was a counselor at a union camp for burn, burned children. Damn, that's a that's a fucking depressing ass summer camp. Not Ren? Yeah, that is a very <laughs> depressing. Yep. Uh, but he lost his temper temper with a homeless man in 2017, daring him to fight. He was demoted last month past the lower rank of lieutenant to paramedic. Damn, he just got good. Isn't that an opening position, paramedic? Paramedic would be the uh, position you'd have if you were starting from the ground floor. Yeah. After 16 years. God damn. Uh, okay, Finney41 was part of a rescue squad that responded to a call about a homeless man with chest pains on February 4th. He told investigators he was trying to help the drunken man to his feet when the man fell back down, pulling Finney with him. Finney said he told the man, come on, be a man, prompting the man to respond, fuck you guys, people in uniform. He tried to calm the man, Finney said, but the man exposed himself, told Finney to suck it, and was full of mess. Okay. Finney stayed in the back of the unit with uh, Agneta Mitchell, an acting lieutenant, for her safety. He told personnel chief Todd uh, Todd Alt. Mm -hmm. But when Alt interviewed Mitchell and other crew members, a different version of events emerged. They said Finney cursed the homeless man and exchanged foul language with him. Mitchell remembered the man saying to Finney, you wouldn't treat me that way without that badge on your chest. You're hiding behind a badge, and otherwise I'd kick your butt. Another crew member said Finney called the man a foul name, pulled off his shirt, and said in a threatening tone, now I don't have the badge on my chest. What what are you going to do? Attempting to defuse the situation, Mitchell said she instructed the man to flip over on the stretcher and to talk to her. Finney then used an expletive while directing the man on how to lie on the stretcher. The man flipped back over and started talking again with Finney. Mitchell then asked Finney to leave the rear of the rescue car, according to a notice of dip disciplinary action contained in Finney's personnel file. Location of the incident was not available in city records. The man identity wasn't released because of patient privacy laws, city human resource officials said. Finney could not be reached for comment. No shit. Uh, the incident didn't come to light until a fighter or fighter in another grievance told uh, another grievance process told Alt about it in December. Finney was further disciplined for talking to Mitchell about her testimony, even though he had been warned against speaking with anyone about the incident while it was under investigation, according to disciplinary action notice. Uh, 
Okay, so he fucked up by uh, talking about the... Uh, I mean, that's just common sense. You don't talk about your case with people involved in the case. You know, like <laughs> during the during the case, during the investigation. You're not supposed right. to talk to the person and go, hey, what's your testimony going to be again? Yeah. Uh, he was barred from taking a promotional exam for two years and removed from the SWAT medics team and explorer program. His annual salary was cut from ninety nine five ninety a year to eighty six seven eighty six a year. That's at least a hit, but he can still live off of it. Of eighty six thousand dollars a year? Yeah, I should hope so. I, I had to, uh, I had to step really cool. away for for a bit, and uh, I came back. Wow! Uh, but I was listening the entire time. That that firefighter is a fucking retard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you telling me this is like the first guy that's really like talked shit to him on duty and gotten under his skin? You know okay. it's not. The first like drugged up drunk asshole that he's had to deal with as a medical response unit? Yeah, I doubt it. I don't think I want to even attempt to, to, to know how this dumb fuck is actually thinking. I'm not driving! How many fucking times do I have to tell you people I'm in a goddamn garage? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are driving him crazy. Does that count? That's true. That is. Oh, accurate. but oh, but Brock is no. I mean, yeah, you had to go to the bathroom for that one. But I have a uh, break Brockus article for today. For damn oh, fucking story. okay. So you know what? I I want I want to go ahead and refer to all the Rob stories as hold my beer. <laughs> So far, Rob's stories have been almost nothing. I, we understand that they're Florida man stories for the most part, but like, there's Hold a lot beer. of stories in there that you could easily also call "Hold My Beer." Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh! But I want to talk about the feminist nutrition class. God damn it, James! I swear to God. What does feminism have to do with it? Is nutrition part of the patriarchy? Wait. Is Ren about to try to do some kind of feminist nutrition fucking article right now? Yes. Uh, I'm scared. Don't, don't, don't you want to hear about this, this, hurt, this hurts my brain already. Don't, don't you want to hear about topics in feminist health uh, that will introduce students to concepts such as feminist nutrition and political eco ecology of health? I, uh... Firstly, want to point out that uh, I don't think there is such a thing as a uh, feminist diet or feminist nutrition or anything like that because it's just simply a diet or nutrition. D Throwing Wait, the word they, feminist in there. Let me guess. They're pointless. bitching that, that your diet needs to be more inclusive and that fucking guavas and shit are marginalized. If that's what's I fucking there, nailed gonna, it, didn't I? I nailed it, didn't I? I'm gonna be so mad. I'm gonna be so fucking mad. Ren, tell tell the goddamn <laughs> article. Readings will draw from a variety of fields, including feminist su science studies, geography, public health, social theory, cultural studies, and more. The course may also count towards a minor in health professionals. The description adds. May um, also, which means nope, <laughs> it's useless. Yeah. Uh, she uh, critiques, the, the whole point of the class is it critiques so-called hegemonic nutrition. And hegemonic nutrition is a social regime, regime that not only writes the rules of fitness and nutrition, but also serves to determine individual fault, usually com combination of lack of education, motivation, or, and unwillingness to comply probably to a diet okay wait so it's it's negative that the the current knowledge our current understanding of health and fitness requires you to eat healthy and exercise and that is part of a system that is discriminatory against women maybe it's patriarchy. That's, I guess, I don't know. That, is, that I mean, might my be brain is hurting. Up. It's just, none of this shit makes sense. Dude. It just, they all just, like, they just invent problems. Word salad incoming. 
nutri feminist nutrition, they assert, would focus on the issues such as decolonization of food advice, acknowledgement oh. of social inequalities, reducing stereotypes and assumptions, reaffirming non-white genealogies of nutrition, and much else. What? Okay, they, hold on. How, hold wait, on. how is nutrition a white thing? How? So, protein isn't good for you. I don't. What? What? What's happening here? What? What the fuck? All of us. You know. Why don't we go and find some nutrition. South African cannibal tribes view on nutrition and see see what their take is and take it into consideration? Why don't we? I have to agree with Billy Senpai uh, for, for this one. Billy Senpai Gaming for five bucks. Now there's a feminist diet? I'm done. I quit. Thanos did nothing wrong. I agree with that. <laughs> I 100% I back that. That's, Thanos, Thanos did, did nothing wrong. I want him to... I want the Infinity Gauntlet so I can snap my goddamn fingers and make <laughs> out this fucking universe just disappear because Jesus um, fucking hell. The woman's... Really? Yeah, okay, the, the, the. Wait till you hear some of the other classes they offer. The Women's Studies Department at Hobart and William Smith College is also offers classes such as Stormy Weather, Ecofeminism, Power, Privilege, and Knowledge, and Feminism, Ethics, and Knowledge. So this is part of a whole group of classes. Wait, uh, how is that not an oxymoron? Feminist <sighs> Ethics. Yeah, because clearly, unless you are in the same bracket as Christina Hoff Summers, you have no ethics. Your morals are completely shot. They look like Swiss cheese gone horribly wrong. I don't... What? What's and happening to society? And she wants to uh, teach a vision of feminist nutrition that it exemplifies the potential parallels between feminist activism and nutri nutrition promotion. Dude, if that makes any sense. word salad. Uh -huh. It means nothing. I just, I don't, okay. Throwing in a word or several words with multiple syllables in it does not make you an intellectual. Coming up mm -hmm. with new fucking ways to make everyone's brain go, stop the woman speaking, I don't like it, stop it, stop it, stop it, does not mean you're winning the war. I don't fucking understand what's happening right now. Like, there are certain phrases out there, there are certain buzzwords out there, and, and, and goddamn triggering phrases that I do fucking hate. Anytime somebody brings up feminism, I'm, I'm now willing to actually listen, like, okay, what kind are you talking about now? But when you come to uh, decolonize or colonize or something along those lines, those are trigger words for me because as soon did, as you no, say totally it, power and privilege, power privilege, God damn it. <laughs> if if I hear you utter those words, we're just done. I'm like I'm not like I'm not even gonna fucking bother. It, it was decolonization anymore. of it was decolonization of food. Uh, of, let's see, where was it? Of food advice. Yeah, yeah, the the uh, the nutrition pyramid, the, the the food pyramid, that was made by white people, so it's. And I have a feeling evil. that is that 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 I nailed it with my guess that like the guava was marginalized because that <laughs> sounds like what she's talking about. <laughs> people aren't eating enough guava. You need to eat more guava. <laughs> so, like the pomegranate is a fruit of color. Yeah. Why would you tell people they need to work out and eat fruits and vegetables? That's just mean. Yeah, that's totally unethical, I guess. I don't know. The natural sugars and juices in, in fruits and vegetables don't give you energy at all. It's bad for you, people. Just eat, just eat junk food, empty calories all day, sugar overload. Let's get that diabetes. <laughs> I live off of Funyuns and Taco Bell. How much do you want to bet she does live off of Funyuns and Taco Bell? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is her fucking main diet. I don't really live off of Funyuns and Taco Bell, actually. I, I eat pretty damn good because my roommate runs a uh, like a health food business. He, he makes food that he sells in gyms and shit like that. Uh, 
peeled.com for anybody who, who's, who's interested or peeled on P E E L D on Facebook. I'm going to plug his, his uh, food shit real quick, but uh, so I eat, I get fucking like all his leftover shit. So I eat pretty damn good. I want to yeah. get, I want to get a bigger audience so I can actually get blue rate, a blue apron as a sponsor because it's, it's another one of those like, are you too fucking lazy to go make your uh, go get your own food and ingredients and shit like that? Well, we'll go ahead and ship this shit to you so you can have healthy fucking food for a Hello monthly Fre price. Hello Fresh is a good option too if you have the money. Yeah, no, seriously, people. Like, if you actually do want to eat healthier, there are actually websites out there like Blue Apron, like uh, what what Bren just pointed out. They have a monthly fucking fee. It might be a bit expensive, but they have a monthly fee for daily fucking meals healthy uh, fucking meals hello fresh is weekly and you get three meals but the oh. good part is you also get uh the recipe card so if you really like it you could recreate it and same thing with blue raven it's the idea of i think hello fresh is the idea of here's a new spin on this try it if you like it recreate it if you tried it and you didn't like it oh well we'll never send you something like that again yeah, yeah, but like, dude. Yeah, okay. Yes, people eat eat healthier. Don't 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 be like me. I'm a fat fuck. Uh, I don't I don't always eat very healthy if I eat at all, and uh, <clears throat> uh, it's it's not always the healthiest food. But eat healthy. Be 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 good to yourself. You know, just don't don't give in to this the stupidity. Don't don't have a diet of Taco Bell and Funyuns and think that you're fucking as healthy as a horse. You're as healthy as a sick horse. About to die with a gun pointed at its fucking head. That's how healthy you are. Jesus fuck. Anyways. Oh, God damn it. Fucking Ren bringing up the goddamn feminist. Dynamic. I know that one. That one almost broke me. God, that's. Hey, hey, hey. Just... I am following what the producer told me to do. This is, the, this is what I was told to look for. And that's what I looked for. I, you know what I, I do find interesting about our, the, the different uh, topics that we, we actually bring to the story? I bring in the, uh, the, the social drama stuff, you know, like what's new uh, on YouTube that's causing people to get pissed off. One of them, of course, I, I will mention in, in a bit. But, uh, you know, it's, it, I mostly talk about the YouTube social stuff or, or the, the little bits of drama that not a lot of people actually know about, things like that. Uh, Rob go, goes into his Florida man and or hold my beer stories. <laughs> Ren brings in the social justice stuff and triggers the uh, shit out of me. Yep. And Ishtar every once in a while brings up very strange and interesting stories, usually based around science, which a lot of her stories I do find very intriguing, especially that hotel in space thing. I love that one. But they can also be triggering. Because it wasn't very long until after that fucking uh, that uh, uh, hotel in space thing did uh, that suddenly get corrupted as shit, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, People moving still on. I have a monkey to talk about. People are yeah. still monkey. shit talking. Who wants to hear about the monkey? Who wants to hear about the monkey? Monkey. Oh, Red wants the monkey. Okay, we have a new video showing monkey on the loose in Home Depot. It's a very dangerous monkey. Monkey attacked employee, then climbed on top of the shelves. Uh, okay, this is in Okeechobee, Florida. Uh, the video is shot by a customer, and it starts with a voice in the background saying, I need a picture of a monkey in Home Depot. People back home won't believe this. Well, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the monkey's owner told police she left her pet monkey in her truck when she went shopping inside the store. Somehow the monkey got out of the trunk and approached a Home Depot employee who was outside on break. Okay. First of all, somehow a monkey got out of the truck. You know those things have like door handles and monkeys are pretty goddamn smart, right? Like they can operate handles and levers and buttons, shit like that. Rudimentary tools. Common sense things. Yes, I, yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not that surprising that a monkey is able to figure out how to get out of a car. Wait Especially a second. You're, watching. Tell, you're telling me this this creature here with an uh, 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 with a thumb, an appendable thumb, is able to use objects like a human? 
<laughs> I know. It's insane. It's insane. Monkeys are an opposable thumb away from taking over the planet. Oh, oh shit! Boy. I can't speak tonight. <laughs> uh, okay. That OBS uh, bullshit point. earlier pissed me off enough to where it just took my vocabulary out the window. <laughs> That employee, Marilyn Howard, tried to help the monkey by walking her to the front of the store and finding her owner. Howard said the monkey got spooked when the sliding glass doors opened and jumped on Howard's shoulders, biting her twice on the arm and leaving deep scratch marks on her back and face. Okay, why why do all your stories with a monkey always end up sad? <laughs> start there off are cute. no ha happy monkey stories. There are, it starts off. Like, you know, the monkey learned how to fucking open the door. Oh, that's cute. And then, and then went it, on a vicious, violent rampage. And started biting and kicking everything. Oh, okay. Well, that monkey needs to be put down. <laughs> uh, Howard said the monkey... Uh, I got that part. A different video shows the monkey jumping at Howard a final time before running into the store. This new video shows the monkey in aisle five hiding in the shelves amongst the paint cans. Howard is seen in the video holding a towel against her bleeding arm, and she and she's led away for medical treatment. Keep it at home, Howard can be sir, heard saying to the monkey's owner. The owner can be seen going from aisle to aisle, trying to convince the monkey to come down. Last week, we asked you not to bring it in here, an employee is heard saying. I didn't bring it in, the owner responded. I ordered online. I was picking up. She was in my truck. So apparently she's been told not to bring her monkey to the Home Depot before. Apparently, this is a recurring issue of this woman bringing her monkey to the Home Depot. How do you, I don't... Does not words right! <laughs> <laughs> How do you fuck... Okay, you brought the monkey once. It caused a big goddamn problem. Don't do it anymore. And you brought were told it the second break. time. It caused a big damn problem. Don't do that anymore. Okay. You should have just stopped bringing that fucking monkey to work, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Why? Uh, for about 10 minutes, the monkey can be seen poking her head out and climbing up and down the shelves, constantly evading capture. Eventually, a man grabs the monkey's leash and uh, brings her down to the floor. From there, the owner gathers the monkey up and loads her into a grocery cart, taking her out of the store. Only in Okeechobee, someone in a herd saying, uh, herd saying, FWC is investigating the incident. It is not clear what will happen to the monkey or if the owner will face charges. While the investigation is ongoing, the monkey is still with the owner at their home in Okeechobee. Uh, maybe she'll get, probably face a fine. I mean, the, the monkey, she isn't treating, there's probably no evidence she's treating the monkey badly, at least. It's a yeah, very probably. Well, it's a very well-kept monkey. And just in case anybody is curious, I will post the link to the article into the chat so they can check out the video if they want to watch a monkey fucking attacking people and running through a uh, okie dokie, Okeechobee, says Mark. That's funny. Wow. No, no. No, get no. Out. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> Mark, get out. <laughs> Why would you do that? So, do better. <laughs> Oh, uh, and Zell has finally showed up. What up, Zell? Hey, Zell. I'm going to take a moment to say hi to the chat. How's everybody doing? Malevolent Riders in there, Psychos there, Blue Collar Canuck, <laughs> Wikipedia Snippet, uh, James Jones, good to see ya. Cocky Dickens, how you doing? Another clone, Ray wait, Stone wait, is wait, here. Wait, 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 there's somebody yes, named Cocky yes. Dickens? Yes. Oh, don't forget that's Will. Psycho Fire, Will. Uh, that's, yeah, that's great. Uh, Cocky Dickens. I, I, I've lost his chat now, but yeah, he's somewhere in there. He's, how you doing, Cocky? That's Mr. I, Dickens. I, and I, his, I, his, his, yeah, I found it. His Cocky Dickens says gay buttholes are sometimes quite impressive. Yeah. Thanks for your input, Cocky. And monkeys <laughs> will sometimes try to bite your face off. <laughs> Yeah, really know uh, why uh, and anybody uh, Will is in there. Anybody else I missed, I am sorry, but uh, thank you for showing up. It's good to have you uh, in the chat. And don't forget Sir Wolfie. Don't forget Sir Wolfie. You almost forgot him. Can't forget Wolfie. And uh, uh, O L I O. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that right. Everybody loves monkeys, even when they're fucking attacking us. 
Yeah, I oh, I don't. Okay. Well, Fox. There, there is that. You know, obviously, you shouldn't have wild animals like monkeys as pets and such because. Fuck that! You know, I want a monkey so bad. I want a monkey. But I wouldn't too. take him home. I wouldn't. I wouldn't take my monkey. Like I, if I had a monkey, it would be cool because it's a monkey. But there's a good chance I would end up killing it. Like not, not, not through <laughs> like any for any real problem or anything. I would probably kill the fucking monkey because it kept opening up the bathroom while I'm taking a shit because it locked the uh, unlocked the door somehow and started taking pictures with my phone and tweeting it out. I'm like, <laughs> how did you do that, monkey? And then I have to explain to everybody my pet monkey is a piece of shit. Um, so no yeah, monkey probably, for you. I that's I come up I'm, with I am now things. making a new Twitter account. Brockus's pet monkey. No, God, don't do that. <laughs> yes, it's happening. I'm, <laughs> I'm starting a new Twitter account. I'm going to be your pet monkey, Brockus. You have to. Okay, fine. Then you have I'm to call yourself. I'm going to torment you on Twitter. You have to call yourself Choo Choo because that is my pet <laughs> Choo -choo. monkey. Choo Brockus' pet, pet monkey, Choo Choo. Yes. If I, had a, if I had a monkey and it was my pet, I would call him Choo Choo. <laughs> Oh, and James Jones is saying in chat, oh, Brockus, no, you would kill the monkey because he stole your cheese proofs. There's that, too. There's a very good possibility that I would end up murdering the fucking monkey because he took my goddamn cheese proofs. Oh, don't, don't take my proofs. <laughs> and Mark is, uh, he's my YouTube lawyer. He says that any pics taken by the monkey is legally the monkey's property. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> <There's Sam laughs> he that, says that, there's that, precedent. <laughs> That same logic applies to wives, girlfriends, and children. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, I don't know what the fuck. God damn I, it, the, the Comos are work, working against me. They just want <laughs> pictures of me taking a poop out in the, uh, in the ether. Oh, fucking hell. What would... Oh, my God. Uh, there was a, a, a thing I was going to bring up earlier. It was, was YouTube-related or drama. Oh, I remember now. <clears throat> so, aside from the Schmeckle ban, some more bullshit happened uh, earlier this week when it came to uh, uh, people deciding to lose their shit over nothing. Are either of you familiar with a comic book artist by the name of J. Scott Campbell? Not the top of my head, no. I might, might know their stuff if I saw it, but not the top of my head the name. J. Scott Campbell is an artist who's been around for quite a while. Uh, back in the 90s, uh, during the days of uh, Spawn and uh, uh, Youngblood pretty much being equal to Marvel and DC's biggest hits, uh, there were two different books that were produced in the late 90s and early 2000s, uh, Gen 13 and um, oh, I'm forgetting the name of the other team uh, of the other book series right now, but uh, it'll oh, Danger Girl, uh, Gen 13 and Danger Girl. Now, J. Scott Campbell was the head artist for pretty much both of those projects and everything. And he was actually very famous for the way he drew women and the, his action scenes and a bunch of other stuff. It's, it's great. Uh, he eventually just kind of stopped producing entire books and started focusing solely on like cover arts and posters and stuff like that. Now he makes a very good living doing variant uh, cover arts for Xenoscope. Uh, for those of you who are not um, well known on Xenoscope, it's a uh, comic book company that actually produces essentially the Grim Fairy Tales comic books. Oh but, yeah, I've seen that stuff. Yeah, and and the best part about it is, is it's not fully Grim Fairy Tales. It's actually just like it's loosely based on the Grim Fairy Tales books, you know, the Brothers Grimm and all that shit. Um, mm -hmm. But it's their own twist. Now, some people might look at it and say, like, Xenoscope is supposed to be, they're, they're pushing this bullshit feminism and this, you know, fucking women empowerment thing because Robin Hood is a female and, and the Peter Pan story isn't even about Peter Pan, this and that and stuff. And I have to explain to people, no, 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 you don't understand. Xenoscope, a very long time ago, uh, saw what sold and it was half naked women. So that's what they have focused on the most. Most of their Sounds heroes. Sounds like a solid business plan. 
It is. And they do fucking damn well for themselves because of it. Anyways, J. Scott Campbell has done a bunch of different variant cover arts for them. He's probably even done a few actual books with them. Um, he's also been commissioned to do stuff for DC as well as Marvel and so on and so forth. If you follow him on Twitter, if you check him out on Facebook, or even, I don't know if he has a, uh, YouTube, but if you look up J. Scott Campbell, the guy actually has a lot of works from Marvel, DC, and Xenoscopes of uh, Grim Fairy Tales. One of them, in particular, was in the Neverland series. And on the cover is a scantily dressed, tied up Tiger Lily being taken away by Captain Hook in that famous scene where Captain Hook is kidnapped Tiger Lily, taken it back to his boat. Peter has to eventually sew up and save the day and all that good stuff. Well, someone has decided to go after Jay because not only was it cultural appropriation, he was over-sexualizing a child. And it wasn't just the child, it was a child of color. And how dare he do that? He's a disgusting person. Then somebody had to explain to him on Twitter, or explain to that person on Twitter. Mind you, this isn't the actual person who did start the, uh, the lawsuit against him or try to get Jay in trouble. I'm not 100% certain, but basically Scott was, or Jay Scott Campbell was recently hit very hard with something like this, where he's now being accused of a pedophile, a sex offender, shit like that. It's a really fucked up actual thing. And um, somebody on Twitter was trying to say, well, he's a pedophile because he was over sexual. He was sexualizing a child. He saw a child and decided he wanted to sexualize it. The person that pointed out, it's actually an alternate universe where Tiger Lily is an adult. When the person decided not to believe even that, you could go and look it up. But the original depiction of Tiger Lily is she was actually an adult in comparison to Peter. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, in the in those days, you would probably say, like, Peter was probably supposed to be about 13, 14 years old, but Tiger Lily was a bit older than that. She she was more like, you know, 16, 17 years old, adult age, marriage age, all that stuff in the old days and all that. And, uh, yeah, she was an adult who was into a little fucking kid and stuff. I mean, the original story is a bit uh, creepier when you actually look at it like that, but, again, different times, people. Fuck off. But yeah, that's what's going on with J. Scott Campbell right now because some fucking people just do not understand what's going on with this artwork. By the way, I can actually screenshot that and bring it up if you guys want to uh, um, take a look at uh, J. Scott Campbell's work. Sure. Go ahead. Look at I've it. actually seen it before. I've been. Tw- uh, I-, I tweeted at this mother, this asshole who was given who was. Uh, Saying it was horror, like you know, just more oppression against natives and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was having fun with him today. Yeah, it's it's fucking stupid. So this is a a uh, collective of uh, his works. He's uh, you know, we got Storm here, Alice, Harley Quinn, Ooh, Harley, a character of his original creation, Danger Girl. You know, this is just this is a, a massive catalog from from Jay. Like this dude has been around for quite a while, and uh, I, I, she gets a lot of hate, but I fucking love the way he draws uh, Jean Grey, and I actually am a fan of Jean Grey. I do enjoy her. Um, she is she's one of those characters that most people hate, but I secretly just kind of like. Well, it's not a secret anymore. I I actually love Jean Grey when she was a good Jean Grey, not a shitty version of her character. But this is this is Jay's uh, um, artwork and stuff, and it's actually fucking amazing. Now, if we look over, this is the picture that got him in trouble. Um, this is the cover art. That's probably not that different than what it was originally intended in the book. Well, I mean, she was probably wearing pants well, in the book. She's, she's wearing just a thong in she's this one. Hot. Yeah, but like this is basically this is that classic scene. Captain Hook is using uh, fucking Tiger Lily to bait Peter Pan to come and get him, but Peter's probably hiding in this little skull thing over here, and he's gonna fucking sneak attack, you know, Captain Hook and everything like that. But this was the picture that people decided to lose their shit over uh, 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 with. My. Notice this says Fairy Tale Fantasies 2014. That's old. Yes. 
J. Scott Campbell's been doing this for a very long fucking time. And four years after that cover art came out, suddenly somebody decides to try to fucking say that he's a dirty, filthy pedo. Really? Really? Okay. Yeah. Pretty sure you're just looking for a fight at this point, you dumb bitches. That's usually what they are. They're looking to be offended. That's fucking stupid because Jay is probably one of the most neutral people I have ever heard of in, in the comic book industry. The guy stays out of everybody's shit and politics so fucking much, you probably wouldn't even be able to find out what his actual political leaning is. And I would not be surprised if you were to ask Jay Scott Campbell, hey man, uh, so where do you stand when it comes to uh, politics? I don't. And that's it. That's all his answer is. I don't. <laughs> oh man I, I just I fucking hate when I hear stories like that because it only reminds me of the the drama and the bullshit that's been uh, coming around with uh, Stan Lee you know the the, the 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 new stuff that's been getting hit with Stan Lee recently uh, you mean the fact that they think his business manager actually was abusing him yeah uh, what's even more depressing about that is that um not too long ago, Stan had actually made a video, which he eventually uploaded to various social media sites. And in the video, he specifically says that he is actually very hurt by the accusations of his daughter. He and his daughter have a wonderful relationship. Uh, she loves him very much. He loves her very much. They have no problems with each other whatsoever. Um, whatever she does with her money is her business. But as far as, uh, you know, relationship wise, Stan and his daughter don't don't have bad blood. Yeah, and for you... people to have perpetrated, uh, perpetrated that, was, it was disgusting. Well, when I find out that, you know, now they're saying his business uh, partner has been um, abusing him this entire time. They just flared that back up again by basically saying Stanley's daughter doesn't fucking uh, know how to spend money. She spends money way too much. Uh, she's just waiting for her dad to die. And I'm just like, Jesus fucking Christ, I can't believe these stories now. It, it depends on the news story. When I read one of the stories on, uh, before, it was actually stating that the business manager may have been the cause of where those rumors came from because he was trying to throw off heat off himself by saying, I'm not doing it. Look, his daughter, his daughter. Wow. So it was probably a tactic by the business manager because – by reports, the business manager's actually been isolating Stan Lee from his family. At least that's what's being reported, is that he was re he was isolating Stan Lee away from his family, making it harder and harder for them to visit him, and getting to the point where now he's under, basically, suspicion for doing all that stuff. This. And that he was scapegoating the, the family. No, of course, yeah, it's just leave leave Stan alone. All right, that's all I really have to say. Leave Stan alone. He's an American treasure. He's a Come he's on. a worldly treasure. Yes. Oh God, yes, he is. That 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 dude, like, he gave us the X Men. I cannot push that hard enough. He gave us the X Men. Shortly after he gave us Spider-Man, the man has given us so many great and amazing characters. I don't understand why there are so Spider -Man many. Spider-Man alone here. is like, like he could be a pedo, and I'd be cool with it. You I'm wait. You, you're saying that Spider-Man could be a pedo? No, Stan Lee. Like, oh like, well, he I, could I, have I, done the shit he said he did. He made Spider-Man. I, why is that? Why why is Zell being such a cut right now? Never mind, it's Zell. I don't know. You may want to check your Twitter though, uh, Brockus. Just why? saying. I don't know. Somebody tweet something out with me. Oh, fucking hell! <laughs> Did Zeal send you something? No, no. A a special new uh, Twitter account has just. <laughs> appeared from Brockus Pet Monkey Choo Choo. The Twitter handle is at Brockus Pet. We'll be posting my latest photo uh, uh, 
photo set soon of Brockus Fury on the toilet. I'm going to call it Orkin a Porta Potty. I'm following that guy. He's, he sounds. I'm going to follow this down <laughs> too. I, I, he sounds like a quality follow. There's no way I is. can. <laughs> oh, and look at that picture. It's so cute and adorable. It's a face you, you would go, oh, just before it mauls you. I know, right? I, I tried to find one of a, of a monkey, like, masturbating, but no, there aren't really any good pics, pics of that out there. It's like, you know surprisingly. What? I think I, I know exactly the most exotic pet I, I can think of is um, a clone of Beard Barian, who's genetically inferior by intelligence alone. Yeah. I'd put a collar, I'd put a collar on uh, Beard Barian Part 2. Or a uh, 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 beardy two, as I would call him, and uh, yeah, that would that he would be my pet, and uh, yeah. he, he would just be. <laughs> I love it. Like, Wait, what? <laughs> What's happening now? I'm gonna clone the beard barian, specifically make it tarted, put a collar on it, and call it my pet. That's that's how that's my, the most exotic pet I could think of. And then I'm gonna bring it to Magog of Morskar, and I'm gonna watch the Beard Barry in part two fucking kill it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so gay. So gay. <laughs> Why is gay stuff so gay? I mean, jeez. <laughs> no, I don't know what it is, but like all week all week long, everything has been gay for some fucking reason. Either somebody's being gay, somebody's pointing out something is gay, something is genuinely gay. It's just it. I don't know. This this has been a very gay week. Yeah, indeed, has been a week. Oh, <laughs> uh, Ren, do you have any more triggering stories? Um, oh, I have my de resistance. Ooh, I want to hear this. Okay. Rob, oh go. crap! I uh, in order to get it, I have to go back and give me just one second. Talk amongst yourselves. I have to log back into my other camera. <laughs> well, Rob, don't tease us. You said you had you had an awesome thing. No, but he, he created that another one. Twitter account. Well, I, I am logged into a, a certain monkey account at the moment. That's fair enough. No, but I love the beard Barry. He says, "Just take one of my bastards. I don't want him." I I would I I have to turn them down. There's clearly a reason that you don't even want them. Not just because they're your kids, and you know, some people would say you're obligated to take care of them. I can fight them on that, but you know, <laughs> there's got to be another reason why you wouldn't want to claim them. Just saying, like they probably got you know a couple extra toes or a extra eye, set of teeth that they shouldn't have. Perhaps they've got a hunchback. Maybe they've got a really long arm and fingers. I'm describing the hermit or the, the humpback from fucking uh, 300, aren't I? Yes, yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> okay, Brockus, I am good to go. Uh, uh, Cannon, I hope you're prepared because I picked this one out especially for you, buddy. Head, head cannon uh, confirmed. Uh, Felt is from uh, from three hundred. Is now the bastard of the beard barian. You created that unholy thing. Deal with it. <laughs> Unknown archive in the chat. I have to read this out. He says I had sex with a horse once. If it, it might not be consensual, as nay means nay. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Unknown archive. Do better. Okay, okay, Here's uh, here is my article. Gregory Matthew Brunei, naked intruder, pooped and masturbated in Tony Land's Florida home. Why? <laughs> in Florida, there are violent people, naked people, poopers and masturbators, but rarely is one man the total package. When Tony and LaDonna Land discovered naked carnival worker, he's a carny, too. That's a fucking another niche on the belt. You know, you know knock on the belt. Notch on the belt. As a, uh, carnival worker Gregory Matthew Brunei on the roof. The night had just begun. Brunei, 21, allegedly assaulted Tony Land, 
trashed a couple's North Fort Myers home and then defecated and masturbated inside the house. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Are you okay. ready for this? We, we got to process it. Just process it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Brockus. He he pooped. Oh, we have a step by step. We are coming right up. So we will. Oh, the, the order of events will soon become clear, Brockus. Uh, the lads told police they were in their bedroom at around 7 p.m. Monday when they heard a noise that sounded like thunder, according to Fox 4 Now. Tony went outside and says he saw Brunei on the top of his roof, completely naked. Uh, Brunei allegedly jumped down on top of the man and knocked him over by hitting him in the shoulder. <laughs> so a naked man, like paratroopers from your roof down and, and fucking lands on your ass. Uh, then Lance say Brunei ran into the house, pulled the big screen TV off the wall, and spilled the contents of a vacuum onto the floor. Around this time, LaDonna grabbed a gun and began in firing at the nude intruder. She missed, and the couple called 911. I don't know who the hell he is. He's naked and he ran into my damn house, Tony can be heard saying on the recording. I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't know what the fuck is. So the naked man pooped. Okay, no, off. so again, just picture this. You're in your bedroom and you hear a bunch of noise coming from your house. You yeah. run downstairs, run outside and turn to look up at your roof and see a naked man dive bombing you from up there. I don't. Uh, knocks your ass, then knocks you down. You know, lands on your shoulder and knocks you down. Then runs into your house and rips at your TV off the fucking wall. And then grabs your your vacuum cleaner and empties it onto your carpet. And during all this, your wife is grabbing your family gun at, at, out from under the bed or in the closet, wherever wherever you're keeping it stored. And going to bravely face the, the naked intruder in her house. However, I would imagine that, it, you know, having your house invaded like that and, and seeing a naked guy destroying your living room, pulling a TV off it, that's got to cause you some considerable amount of distress. Wouldn't you think, Brockus? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. So, so uh, this woman, who is probably not that familiar with uh, handguns in the first place, could be wrong. Just an assumption. But given the facts of the situation, high stress situation, she fires her gun several times at the man and misses him every time. And that is where we are at right now. That, that is where we, that is the point we have reached in the story. Was there drugs involved? I am guessing probably yes, considering what else is about to happen. Continue. <laughs> The lands told authorities that after shots were fired, Brunei began, began whacking the mole in the living room. So he ignores the gunshots and then proceeds to beat off. He's probably got some kind of murder boner going on. But uh, uh, anyway, so he uh, masturbates for a few minutes in their living room before heading into their son's bedroom to rub some clothing on his face. I will say that again. I will say that a second time for anybody who didn't quite hear that correctly. The naked man stopped masturbating and went into their son's bedroom to rub some of his clothes on their face. Now, this is the point where I would have reloaded the gun and gone for the headshot execution style. Start fucking with my son, like start sniffing my son's clothes. That is, uh, that is where I consider you a threat to my family. Like a, a serious, not just some crazy guy that's fucking, you know, that's on something. You are, you have now become a, a dangerous, serious threat to my family. And you get, you get it in the head, in the back of the head, the double tap in the back of the head. I don't know how to process any of this, Rob. <laughs> you shut your brain off. That's what I'm doing. No, you can't. You can't because the story is not done. Oh my God. <laughs> when deputies arrived, they attempted to control Brunei who they say was wildly flailing around and speaking nonsensically. They all had also discovered that Brunei had defecated on the floor in two spots 
within the home. So that means that during this running around and uh, knocking TVs off and vacuum cleaner dumping and masturbating and rubbing child boys' clothes on her face, that he stopped to, to uh, drop a load and then he pitched the fucking loaf and moved to a secondary location and continued. Because, you know, once you're done shitting, you can't shit for a while. So if there are two piles of shit in the house, that means you pinch the loaf in one location and move to a second location to continue. Maybe the second location was more comfortable. Maybe he had a you know, little sunlight coming down, a little warmth from a window. Who knows? Who knows the reason? I want a lot of I, I, I want a lot of booze. A lot of <laughs> booze right now. He sh he shit twice, jerked off, tackled a guy naked from a rooftop, evaded a shotgun, ripped a fucking TV off of the wall, knocked over a vacuum, and rubbed the little kid's fucking clothes on his face. That there is one more uh, item of note that oh, one more thing that he has done <laughs> that may indicate uh, some mental imbalance of some of some kind. Uh, at some point during the ruckus, investigators say, Brunei sucked up the contents of the vacuum and then spit it back out. So he drank the vacuum. This is, uh, this. I'm guessing this is when, at some point, when he was messing with the vacuum contents. I'm guessing Going, this is at some point he was really fucking high off his mind because I don't think normal people do that. That might be a good, uh, good guess. That might be a an that is a very well educated guess, Sir Brockus. Uh, Brunei was taken into custody and transported to a hospital for evaluation where doctors reportedly told deputies they planned to conduct tests to determine, quote-unquote, what Brunei was on. I think? really want to know. <laughs> I want to know myself because that was just one of those situations where you, you just – you can't really – what? <laughs> yes. Just, Brunei has been charged with criminal mischief, battery, occupied burglary, and resisting arrest without violence. Uh, so let's recap the allegations against Brunei. One, he got naked, climbed onto the land's roof. Uh -huh. Two, attacked Tony Land by jumping on him and hitting his shoulder. Three, ran into the land's house, knocked down a TV, and spilled the contents of the vacuum onto the floor. At which point, he then drank the contents of the vacuum and spit it back out. Four, Dodged bullets fired by LaDonna Land. Five. Masturbated in the living room. Six. This is the sixth allegation. Rubbed clothes on his face in the Land's son's room. Seven. Shit on the floor in two separate locations. And eight. Resisted arrest when the fucking police came to take him in. Let's be honest. I would resist arrest if I had just done all of those things. <laughs> <clears throat> I I don't think I would want to be arrested while naked, having shit in two separate places in that house, jerked off just before I realized I need to have a kid's fucking clothes on my face. Dodging bullets while doing all of this, ripping a TV off the wall, tackling a man while naked, drinking, knocking over, then drinking the contents of a vacuum only to spit it up. Yeah, uh, him resisting arrest was not the shocking part of any of what just happened. <laughs> None so, of, ever, so no we, one was surprised. We in that entire article. That's the only normal thing he did after a laundry list of fucking crazy. <laughs> I oh man, what has your brain over there? Um, I think it went on vacation. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure mine shot itself as soon as I heard the guy had tackled the guy naked after, and then shit twice and jerked off. It, I don't know. 
mine lasted to the vacuum cleaner part and then it went by. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just, some people, you know, sometimes Florida brings you something that just goes above and beyond. I'll say it. Florida uh, brings people together. Does. Yes, it does. It brings people together so we can point and laugh or point and be disgusted. Either way, it brings us together. Oh, and Gulf City showed up just in time to miss the fucking best story of the night. Yeah, go. but what we recapped on it, what he did in that story yeah. so many times. I'm pretty sure AP's looking at his screen like, like what so the good. fuck did I click it's on? such a good story. It's like, oh, Florida, just keep keep on coming. Keep on bringing the crazy, man. We love it. It's such a in good fact, story. I think wait, we can almost wait, end it on this one. Let's. I wish for next week, I'm hoping for a story that counts that as like a, a, a three or a seven. And I want something that cranks it up to 11. Florida, deliver, baby. Deliver for me. Come on. You can do it. I, I'm pretty sure Florida will definitely give you some. If not, you will have a bunch of monkey stories to fucking read uh, before any of that actually, you know, goes down. Like, Because uh, you, you got you to gotta have the filler. You just got to have that filler. Mm-hmm. All right. You got to yeah. save the true cringe for the end to break, <laughs> to break Brockus's mind. We stretch it with all the other stories. And then the uh, final Rob story is intended to break it. Yeah. The, <laughs> Snap it. Sometimes I think it's going to be Ishtar's story that breaks me. Sometimes I think it's going to be Ren's story that breaks me. It, this week it was Rob's. Yep. <laughs> I knew Rob, it would. Robin, as soon as I saw it, man I thank the Florida man gods, whatever Florida man gods are out there, for allowing me to torment Brockus this week. <laughs> it's failure. Happy. I've been it's looking the, forward to it. It's failure accomplished. He 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 uh, he put something in the water. Let's let's be honest here. He put something in the water. He's not telling anyone what it was, and that's what happened. I would totally dose Florida if it gave us more stories like these. I would I would hatch a fucking domestic terrorism plot to dose the uh, the water supply of the Florida greater Florida area. And oh, wow. uh, if these stories just keep coming, I would just, do that in a heartbeat. Just for more naked man assaults. No. <laughs> just, 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 just fucking anything like that. That's, that's, a, that's a wonderful story. <laughs> like they, You only come across something like that once in a great blue moon. Ren, you tell Igor to stop trying to draw up naked man as a new superhero. That comic book will not happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have this weird feeling that Igor is sitting in, in a, like a little office or something like that, drawing on his fucking... Uh, pads, just like I have a great idea for a new comic book character. Thank you, cunt stream. And I'm just like, you no. Sleep. You're lucky. Oh. <laughs> you trippy, uh, any penis dick pics I get are going on uh, Brox's monkeys, pet monkey choo choo's uh, Twitter feed. Oh God, no. just to let you know, that's terrible. <laughs> and they're all, and I'm going to claim they're all Brockus. Oh God. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, yeah, that's uh, – Ren, unless you got another story, I think that's – I think, that's, I think that, that's a good end point. <laughs> How do you top that? You can't. You can't. All right, everybody. Golf clap. Golf clap for that yeah, gentleman golf. who brought us entertainment for the weekend. That was good. That was good. <laughs> All right, so we we talked about a lot of fucking crazy things tonight. We talked about Schmeckel's fucking uh, Twitter ban situation. We talked a little bit about J. Uh, J. Scott Campbell and the bullshit that has recently hit him with uh, uh, fucking political correctness and whatnot. Uh, we also talked about the DNA storage. Was that? Oh, wait, no, that was probably one of Ishtar's stories. Um, but she was not here, so... Feminist yeah. nutrition. I was hoping she was actually going to show up halfway through at least, but uh, I guess things just came up. Oh, well, we'll save it for next uh, next week, or, or she could probably use it on another show that she does. Yeah, we talked about feminist diets. Fuck. I don't... Taco Bell and Funyuns are not a diet. It's... it's Says you. Excuse. It's an excuse. Shut the fuck up. Uh, we also talked about... Oh, God. Not with that attitude, it's not. <laughs> What were the other stories you had, Ren? One of them was uh, uh, feminist nutrition. Feminist nutrition, and then I actually look because my brain's kind of shut off a little bit. A uh, girl gets a 
head stuck in tailpipe. <laughs> That's right. Dumbass got her head stuck in a tailpipe. <laughs> and um, oh yeah, the guy who got severely screwed over by clingy girlfriend. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Super clingy girlfriend. Okay. Well, anyways, that's going to be it for tonight, cunts. Uh, we 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 had a bunch of crazy stories going on. Um, you can of course uh, follow uh, um, uh, Reading Ren at uh, uh, Wrinkled. Uh, what is that? Ren Kindle Hell. Oh, Ren Kindle Hell. <laughs> on Twitter, you can find uh, Robert Como at uh, at Robert Como eighty two. Uh, Ishtar is Ishtar Jam. Oh, I, of course, am Brockus underscore Fury. And uh, Schmeckel, of course, is the one who usually tweets out the fucking watch link to come and check out the show. That's and it, don't everybody. forget to follow uh, Choo Choo at Brockus's pet. Now you can go ahead and follow the very annoying fucking Choo Choo who's probably going to have pooping pics of me. And it's going to be very questionably weird. Anyways, everybody, uh, that has been the show. The Cut News Network. Take it easy. Get the get the fuck out of pencil.